Hey, welcome to Hannity. We start tonight with a Fox News alert. Tonight, President Joe Biden laid out his radical wish list for America. His speech was um, so hyped up, it was bizarre. I will not be shouting the whole hour. Frankly, so at odds with everyday Joe, it's even frightening uh, to me. He spent most of the night shouting, speeding through his speech, and clearly overcompensating from the normal everyday Joe that can barely string two sentences together. Uh, at times, it became uncomfortable watching him screaming and yelling and speeding through that speech. Uh, the AP affectionately called it feisty. I guess that's one way to describe it. Tonight, America saw... Um, let's say, a very different Joe Biden. I might call him jacked up Joe, and that's being charitable. He sounded like a hyper-caffeinated, angry old man. We'll have a lot more on that coming up. And in spite of what Joe Biden claimed tonight, sadly, the state of our union is not strong. And sadly, politics was the clear agenda of the president. And facts and truth, that took a back seat to that radical agenda. This was a DNC political speech. Now, throughout the hour, we will fact check the many falsehoods that the president declared tonight. Biden's address was uh, literally filled uh, up with jacked up Joe screaming lie after lie. So we begin to unpack the propaganda, the misinformation that will likely be ignored by much of the media mob. Let's start with his lies on the economy. Take a look. My inherited economy is on the brink. Now our economy is literally the envy of the world. 15 million new jobs in just three years, a record, a record. Wages keep going up, inflation keeps coming down. Inflation has dropped from 9% to 3%, the lowest in the world and tending lower. The landing is and will be soft. All right, here is the truth. Here are the facts. Since Biden took office, cumulative uh, prices have risen over 17 percent. Uh, real hourly wages have only risen 13 percent. Sixty percent of our fellow Americans, sadly, they are living paycheck to paycheck. Now, costs across the board, they are surging. Groceries are eating up more of the American people's paychecks than they have in over 30 years. In fact, according to a recent study, Americans now need to make 11 thousand four hundred dollars more to afford the same quality of life that they did in 2021 and his claims about job creation another lie in reality almost 10 million of those jobs are just well backfield jobs or temporary jobs that were lost during the pandemic and as we know now many of those other jobs were part-time jobs going to many foreign-born workers that he's let into this country unvetted illegally and don't forget about the biden supply chain crisis which has devastated our economy for months on end but seriously they're blaming biden's economic failures on what greedy corporations and shrinkflation take a look too many corporations Raise prices to pad the profits, charging more and more for less and less. That's why we're cracking down on corporations that engage in price gouging and deceptive pricing, from food to health care to housing. In fact, the snack companies think you won't notice if they change the size of the bag and put a hell of a lot fewer, <laughs> same, same size bag, put fewer chips in it. No, I'm not joking. It's called shrinkflation. Americans are feeling the burden of Bidenomics day in and day out, and it's not because there are a few less chips in bags that you might buy. It's because of Joe Biden's failed policies. But this was only the tip of the iceberg in terms of Biden's lies tonight. He went back to his new favorite attack, blaming Republicans for the border crisis he himself created. Take a look. In November, my team began serious negotiation with a bipartisan group of senators. The result was a bipartisan bill with the toughest set of border security reforms we've ever seen. Oh, you don't think so? Oh, you don't like that bill, huh? This bill would save lives and bring order to the border. It would also give me and any new president new emergency authority to temporarily shut down the border when the number of migrants at the border is overwhelming. The Border Patrol Union has endorsed this bill. The Federal Chamber of Commerce is, yeah, yeah. You're saying low, look at the facts. I know, I know you know how to read.
I believe that given the opportunity for a majority in the House and Senate would endorse the bill as well, a majority right now. But unfortunately, politics has derailed this bill so far. Wrong again. Since day one, Joe Biden worked to undo every Trump era policy that he inherited, uh, and he did inherit the most secure border in history. DHS Secretary Mayorkas even bragged about rescinding all of the Trump policies that actually worked. Take a look. So we have rescinded so many uh, Trump immigration policies, it would take so much time to list them. We um, rescinded the Remain in Mexico policy. We rescinded, of course, uh, the public charge rule that deprived um, vulnerable migrants uh, from accessing uh, certain critical life benefits. We uh, have restored the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, the DACA program. We have rescinded so many and have restored so many that he um, really dismantled. With the stroke of a pen, Joe Biden ended Trump's efforts to exclude illegal immigrants from the census. He strengthened DACA, canceled Trump's interior enforcement rule. He stopped construction of the border wall. He extended deportation protections for Liberians. He suspended asylum deals with Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. He ended the Remain in Mexico policy and let Title 42 expire. For three long years, it was Joe Biden, his vice president, his Department of Homeland and Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, all of their spokespeople telling you, the American people, lie after lie, telling you the border was secure and telling you the border was closed, uh, which your eyes showed you very differently. That was not the truth, and it still isn't. Take a look. It sounds to most folks like a crisis. Well, look, it's way down now. We've now gotten control. Precisely that. The border is closed. Nor could I have been clearer and continue to be so, which is the border is closed. The United States will continue to enforce our laws and secure our border. The border, um, we are working to make the border more secure. You're confident this border is secure? We have a secure border in that that is a priority for any nation, including ours and our administration. We agree that uh, the border is secure. And because of that, we now have nearly 10 million unvetted, illegal Joe Biden immigrants roaming free around the country. Many from our top geopolitical foes, including Russia, China, Iran, Syria, Egypt, Afghanistan. Biden does not need Congress to re-implement all of these actions and secure the border. Anyone in the administration that says that, like the president screamed tonight, that is flat out lying. Now, that's almost as big a lie as telling us that the border was secure for three years. This is a joke. It's sad, and it has severe consequences. Joe Biden has created what is an unmitigated national security crisis. In the words of some former top FBI officials, this is literally an invasion of military-age men. He has failed to stand up to our biggest adversaries on every front. There has been no meaningful response to Iran or Chinese, uh, China's aggression. Uh, our adversaries are watching, and they are frankly laughing at the pathetic and weak leadership that is Joe Biden. Now, in a rather bizarre moment, and that was pretty much the entire speech, Joe also attacked the U.S. Supreme Court and Supreme Court justices right there to their face. Take a look. State laws banning the freedom to choose, criminalizing doctors, forcing survivors of rape and incest to leave their states to get the treatment they need. Many of you in this chamber and my predecessor are promising to pass a national ban on reproductive freedom. My God, what freedom else would you take away? Look, it's a decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. The Supreme Court majority wrote the following, and with all due respect, justices. Women are not without electoral, electoral power. Uh, excuse me, electoral or political power. You're about to realize just how much you get right about that. It is another flat-out lie that Republicans want to ban abortion and IVF. And meanwhile, Joe Biden laughably also tried to play unifier and touted his bipartisan work. 
Now take a look at your screen. According to a recent Fox News poll, Joe is failing massively on that front. He's failing on pretty much every issue. Just 26% believe he has successfully unified our country. He has not. Joe can't even unite his own party, let alone the country, losing tens of thousands of votes to uncommitted, the uncommitted option in the Democratic primaries on Tuesday night. And tonight, prior to his speech, well, leftist protesters, they gathered to blast his stance on the war in Israel. And then there's the, the polls. A recent Gallup poll has his approval at just a mere 38 percent, well below the typical 50 percent threshold that incumbent presidents need to win re-election. A recent ABC poll found the staggering 86 percent of you, the American people, think that he is too old to run again. On just about every single issue, Joe Biden is deep underwater. He is failing on every single front, and Americans are not buying his lies, whether he whispers them or shouts them.